Grazie. Buongiorno. Come state? Good, good. <laughs> good morning. I would like to begin this morning by giving a big, big thanks to Macro Edzioni for making this day possible. Macro Edzioni, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, all the macro people. And El Vise. I will also begin with an apology because I do not know your language well enough to share this in Italian. And my deep, deep, deep appreciation and gratitude to every one of you for making this day possible. My sense is that our day will go by very quickly today. We have a very full program today. The, the program is about us. It's about you, it's about me, it's about our world. And I know that you know our world is changing very, very quickly. We have solutions, and we could implement those solutions right now. It's possible. But the problems in the world seem very big. And what I'd like to talk to you about is how those problems influence our lives and what we can do in our lives to make things better for us. So I'm going to begin right now with a statement from a brilliant, brilliant biologist. His name is E. O. Wilson. E. O. Wilson. He's still living today. What E. O. Wilson says to us is that we are drowning in information while starving for wisdom. Drowning in information while starving for wisdom. And I think there's a lot of truth to this statement, but he goes on. He says more, and this is the reason I'm sharing the statement with you. He says, the world from now on will be run by people that he calls synthesizers. Synthesizers. These are the people that are able to put together the right information at just the right time, think critically about that information, and make important choices wisely. And this is where you and I are right now. We are synthesizers in this world. It's no longer enough to be an expert in only one topic. We must know a little bit about many things. Have you noticed that? Yeah, we must know a little bit about many, many things to make our lives work. And that's why I've invited you to this program today. We're going to talk about big issues in the world. We're going to talk about new science. We're going to talk about ancient wisdom. We're going to talk about the power of the human heart to change our bodies and to change our lives. And we're going to learn the strategies and the techniques to do precisely that. In this program today, I'd like to begin with the context of what makes our time in history so unique. Why is now different? Then I'm going to talk about the fact that the changes in the world have led to a new normal in our lives, a new normal, new rules. And we must learn to embrace the new normal so that we can thrive, not just survive, thrive in the new world that is emerging. We're going to talk about the bridge between science and spirituality. And I'd like to say just a word about spirituality and religion. When I speak about spirituality, I'm not talking about religion. For me, the spirituality that we will share in this room, it's the deepest truth of us, our relationship to our bodies, our relationship to the earth, our relationship to people around us, our relationship to our past, our relationship to our future, Ancient traditions tell us that is the key to spirituality. 
to understand ourselves and our relationship to the world. The religions arrived later and they created rules and many of the rules make us feel separate from our global family, from our brothers and sisters. Many of the rules lead us to believe that we are powerless in our own lives. This is where the separation comes from. So when I speak of spirituality, it is us and our relationship to ourselves in the world. Does that make sense? Did I, did I say that okay? Then we will begin a conversation of resilience. Resilience that helps us to adapt to the changes of our new world. The resilience that is the wisdom of our ancestors. So this is what I'd like to do today. I'm going to begin with some facts. It is a fact that we are living a time of extremes. Now, the extremes don't have to be bad things. They don't have to be good things. They are big things, big, big changes in our world. And what that means is that our world is changing in ways that we have never seen. It means that our lives are changing in ways that we're not used to. And for most of us, the changes are happening faster than we have been prepared to accept. So I'm going to ask you, do you feel those changes in your life today? Do you feel that the world is changing quickly? Yeah? Is, is your life changing quickly? I think it's true for everyone, everywhere in the world, from the small villages of the indigenous people in the Andes Mountains of Peru and Tibet, to the largest cities of the planet, everyone is saying the same thing. They're saying the world is crazy. The world is upside down. What is going on? People say this everywhere, not just in Italy. What it means is that we must think and live differently now more than we ever have in the past. We've got to think differently about ourselves and our world. And I believe that that begins by embracing the facts the truth of what's happening to us in the world. We can no longer separate the big world out there from what is happening in our family and in our community. We can no longer make that separation. So for example, we can no longer separate the climate change from the whole world from the climate change in our own backyard. My wife and I live in a rural community in northern New Mexico in the United States. Three months ago, our neighbors in Denver, Colorado, received more rain in one storm than has ever been recorded in history. And this is what Denver, Colorado looked like. It is six hours from my home. So only six hours south, this is what my home looks like. This is our backyard in New Mexico. The extremes of the climate are affecting everyone. We can no longer separate the extremes of what is happening with the energy of the world. The price of oil keeps increasing, and it is increasing the price that we pay for our food. I want to show you this image from the United Nations. This is a graph showing the relationship between the price of oil and the price of food. The red is the oil, the blue is the food. You can see the relationship. As the energy becomes more expensive, the food becomes more expensive to produce. They use oil to pump the water, to irrigate the crops. They use oil for the tractors to harvest the crops. And this is this is continuing today. We can no longer separate the currencies of the world and the economies of the world. We can no longer separate the dollar and the euro and the yen and what's happening in the African and the Asian economies. We used to. We can no longer do this. And this means that we are all being affected by these changes. We can no longer separate the economic impact of 
industry that is disappearing throughout the world. Factories are closing. People are losing jobs. And every nation that I go to and every city that I visit, we're seeing more and more of this. People with no home, with no job, with no food. They used to have jobs. The jobs have disappeared because the world changed. We have never been given the blueprint to adapt to the kind of change that we're seeing. We've never been told how we adapt to this kind of change. So today, what I have are specific strategies, some of them regarding jobs and careers. I have strategies this afternoon for this, and examples, and case histories. Well, I'm going to begin today with the personal adaptation, the personal resilience, because we must change within ourselves before those changes will show up in our families and in our communities. All right, we live in a globalized world. I know that you know that. And this is what has changed everything. In our globalized world, we share everything. We share the good things, we share the bad things. We share the big things, we share the small things. In our globalized world, we share culture. Everywhere in the world you go, you now see the golden arches of McDonald's. Everywhere. I was in Tibet, Lhasa, Tibet, the capital of Tibet, when they opened a new McDonald's in the heart of the Tibetan Buddhist community. Well, <laughs> so the problem is in Tibet, they have no cattle to make the beef, to make the hamburger. But they have another animal called a yak. You all know the yak? Y-A-K? So instead of a Big Mac, the monks and the nuns like to have a Big Yak burger. That's the joke. <laughs> We share the culture. Everywhere in the world you go, you see McDonald's, you see Starbucks, you see KFC. We share music, we share art, we share technology. I have spent a lot of time in the monasteries and the nunneries where people go to be isolated so they can focus on themselves. All of that is changing. Look at what the monks are doing now. Look at this. These monks, they are texting one another. They're no longer isolated the way they used to be. Even the holy men in India on the Ganges River. Look at this. <laughs> That's me from a past life. <laughs> The technology is changing everything. We share technology. These, these ladies are on Facebook in the desert in Ethiopia. So we share the culture. We share the technology. We share the good things. We share the bad things. We share the extremes of life. All of the extremes. So we can no longer separate the world out there from our life right here. Now, there's a lot of very good news, and I wanted to get to the good news very quickly. It says, good news, right there. The good news is that we already have all of the solutions to the big problems in the world. For example, we already have all of the food that we need to feed every mouth of every child, every woman, every man in this earth right now. We have the food right now. The lack of food is not the reason people are going hungry. It's the thinking that has yet to make it a priority for that food to reach the people that need it. We already have the technology to create clean, efficient, sustainable, energy and bring it into every home 
of every human on the face of the earth with zero greenhouse gases and zero fossil fuels. We have that technology right now. The technology is not the problem. It's the thinking that has not allowed this technology to benefit our global family. We already know how to heal the economy of the world. We know how to heal the economy. We know the economy is broken. It's unsustainable in its present form. We know how to close the gap between poverty and wealth that is destroying our families, destroying our communities, and destroying our nations. We already have the solution to these problems. We already know how to create communities that are clean, sustainable, and self-sufficient because they exist today like this one. This is a community in northern Arizona in the United States. It is a community of 5,000 people living together. They grow all of their own food. They create all of their own electricity. And they have 100% employment because everyone in the community is involved in growing the food and sustaining the power that fuels the community. We already have these models. We already know how to do these things. So the question is, if we have all of those solutions, where are they? Where are those solutions today? Where are they now? Why don't we see them in the world if they already exist? And the answer to that question leads to maybe the greatest crisis of all. It's a silent crisis. Very few people talk about this. It is a crisis in the way that we think. It's a crisis in thinking. There is a resistance in mainstream media to talk about the things that you and I are talking about today. There's a resistance in the documentaries on television in the classrooms, in the textbooks, in the teachings, to share the facts of what is really happening with the economy, what's really happening with climate change, what's really happening with energy, what's really happening with agriculture and our global family. Okay, it's a crisis in thinking. So my question is this. How can we possibly thrive in the new world of sustainable solutions if we are waiting for the old world to come back. Many people believe that the problems that we see in the world today are temporary. They say if we wait long enough, everything will go back to normal, back to normal. It cannot go back to normal because that world no longer exists. We live in a world of no isolated countries. We don't use isolated resources any longer. We used to, but we don't. The world changed. We no longer live in the climate of 15 years ago, 20 years ago, where the seasons were regular. That, that time has passed. We no longer live in the economy of the 1990s or the early 2000s. That time has passed. But no one is saying this in the mainstream media. They're not talking about these facts. What that means is that life has changed. The way that we think about money is changing. The way that we think about industry and jobs and careers, it's changing. The way we think about religion and spirituality, it's changing. The way we think about medicine and health, the way we think about security, the way we think about our life is changing and no one has told us. So we're left to figure this out on our own. There is no special 
on the television on BBC or CNN saying, Flash, the world has changed. But you and I know the world has changed because our lives are changing. And we're looking for ways to make it better. <laughs> 